Oh man, we're back again. Welcome back to another video, guys. So in the last one, we covered uh, after the 80 percent, we covered these bosses right here: amygdala, aliens, abritus, and cleric. So now we're headed to the witches split, and in this video, we're going to cover the witches and Legarius. So there's a good amount of things to cover in this. So let's get started. So after we killed Cleric Beast, we came back to Hunterstream. Remember to dump your insight and start having more blue elixirs because you're going to need a lot for these next coming areas. Um, and what we're going to do now is we are going to... Where am I going? Oh yeah, we're going to the Witch's Split. Okay, so we're going to go to the Abandoned Workshop and you need to have equipped your pungent blood cocktails and your blue elixirs for this split. So we went to the workshop. Remember, this is the workshop where we got the doll set. So that's where we're headed to right now, as you can see. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go out and we're gonna go up these stairs and we're gonna get our last rune that we pick up. This is the beast rune. So remember, drop down and drop all the way. And now we're going to kill this beast because we kill him pretty fast. Two hits, he's dead. You automatically get the rune once you kill him. And we're going to be more cautious on this part now for this dog. So we're going to throw a cocktail in this corner here for the dog. And you're just going to run right by him and up the elevator. Remember that you need to send this elevator back down. So when you're, when you're on the way to Amelia, please, please send that back down. So now we don't have to worry about it anymore. We don't have to go back to there ever again. And we're going to head up like we're going to go to Amelia. This time, the enemy's placements are going to be a little different. So this guy's going to be in the same place. He's pretty easy. Just run past him. But the other dude, he doesn't block your path anymore. And instead of going up to the Amelia fight, you're going to go left. And we're going to head down this way. Uh, this is another split that's really tough. There's two dogs that you have to deal with that are a pain because they don't they don't act like normal dogs remember i told you those first two dogs that you deal with before old yarnum they're very easy but these dogs are insane so once we get out to the opening here we're gonna throw an elixir i mean i'm sorry we're gonna throw a cocktail pop an elixir switch back to our cocktails here and we're gonna just head through this pathing path here around this tree now, this is the part that's very, very tricky. So there's a guy here and there's two dogs. Now, a lot of situations that I've dealt with, and I've practiced this section a lot trying to come up with a strat, um, but it's just, it's really crazy how these, how these dogs work. So what you'll do is you'll throw a cocktail and they will just ignore it completely. And I don't know why, but a good strat to do is throw a cocktail to the left and then just try and kill them. So you see how crazy they're acting? So just try and kill them. And I think at this point, this dog got stuck in the tree. <laughs> it was the craziest thing I've ever seen. Look, he's just stuck in the tree. I was just like, what is going on? So yeah, that's, that's a part that I would definitely say um, practice to make sure you can get it. But usually one cocktail, you can R1 and L1 and kill the dogs, but remember, where you throw the cocktail is where they're going to try and attack, but they also can just randomly attack you. So this is, this is just something that happens. But once you practice it, you should be okay. So we're going to grab the lamp at this little corner here. We're going to pop an elixir and we're going to run through these witches. Now be careful because they can actually still swing at you. So just watch out and see what they're doing. This one usually won't do anything. And we're going to head up to the right, manage your stamina. We're gonna run behind this one because she can throw a Molotov at you. Get your stamina back, run by this big thick boy. He'll never hit you, no matter what he does, don't worry about it, he won't hit you. And we're gonna curve around and we're gonna head to this corner and we're gonna drop attack because there's a witch here. And at this point your elixir should pop off or wear off, so just use another one. And we're gonna run past these crows. Ravens, I don't know what the heck they are. And then get your stamina back, run across this bridge and this this is the scary part coming up so see a freaking witch just try to throw a molotov at me that it's kind of rare that she'll do that but she will now for this part there's a dog here 
what you're gonna do is run over to the left like you're gonna you're gonna be running in the middle you're gonna just curve over to the left a little bit and then go right and then up the stairs the dog will always just fall past you just like that so let me just see it one more time so we're gonna run curve and up the stairs just like that and you see my head i'm shaking because that was super sketchy and go up the ladder and you should be safe that was that was really scary <laughs> but it's something that happened and once you get to the opening you're gonna pop an elixir and what we're working towards is opening the shortcut uh coming up so run around the rooftop get your stamina back run over this little ramp thing and down this the these two openings is where i go down so when you see the trees and these openings next to this this bonfire just jump down there and then go straight down there's nothing that'll come after you so you don't have to worry about it even all the enemies that you see like don't worry about it open up the shortcut here like these big guys won't do anything so you're completely safe run by these tombs go up and you are in this area this is your safe zone so now you can relax and what you're going to do is put your bold hunters mark on and you're going to put your keep your blue elixir on and just make sure you have enough for this split um i think you need one two three four five i think you need five total so just make sure that you have enough um you don't have to pop your insight your madman's knowledge here i'm just doing it because what we're doing is waiting for these witches so there's three of them two of them will path down and then the third one will kind of linger and as soon as you see the third one turn that's when you run and what you're gonna do you're right here you're gonna run to this little curve because that one can hit you like for some reason they don't care if you have an elixir it's really annoying but yeah you're just gonna go to that little curve and then you're gonna go into the fight run up this this ramp here and then you're gonna bold hunters mark out the reason you do this is because if you noticed uh right okay so you see how these enemies are here there's a witch here and then a witch like in the corner so there's two witches total but they have enemies that are in this fight if you have insight so what you need to do is activate the fight and mark out so once you mark out what you're going to do is you're going to be back to this lamp you're going to go back to the hunter's dream you're going to get rid of it bring it to zero if you bring it to zero when you go back into the fight those enemies will no longer be there and it'll just be the witches and it's the easiest fight you could ever do in your entire life and it's very fun it's really cool if someone's watching you do it because of how much damage you do so what i do is i put things on in a specific order so i'll put blue elixirs i'll put beast blood pellets and i'll put bolt paper that's the order that i do them in because if you use a if you use a blue elixir you cannot use a beast blood pellet until that elixir wears off so that's just the order that i put them in and once you go back to hunter's dream just make sure you have uh elixirs for this next running check section you need two of them total so as you can see we pop an elixir so we're doing the same run through again we actually run through this area three times but it's it's not that bad it's it's pretty easy to get through so just run all the way here and you see how she can throw a molly but if you run behind her she won't hit you with it and then run past this guy you see he doesn't attack if you're just running past he's completely fine and then now that was our shortcut that we opened so we're going to run through these tombs don't worry about those guys there you're going to go back to your safe spot and what i do here is i wait a little bit until they start to come down because blue elixirs last for 30 seconds so i wait just a little bit right here until they start to come down they'll do the same pathing two of them will go down and then one of them will um kind of linger and then turn back around so this, you see the order that i have blue elixir beast blood pellet and you see how i'm on my pellet now and i cannot use it basically i do this and i wait until they start to come down so that the blue elixir starts to wear off and by the time i get down to the fog gate i'll be able to pop my uh beast blood pellet for the fight so same thing we just run through go to this little corner here just in case and see how my pellet now it's active because my blue elixir wore off so we're gonna pop the pellet 
and buff up. You can do these in the fight, but I like to do it before. And we're gonna head left. And what I do here is I run behind the witch. I charge up in R2 and I hold on my controller down so that it aims there. You can turn your camera around if you want. It's just something that I do. And then get the repose and that witch is dead. Now this switch is right here. And the only thing you really need to watch out for is if she does these blue things, it'll like do this grab on you, similar to the brain sucker. So you just wanna be cautious of that. Like, there you go, right there. So, oh yeah, I got really lucky there. So just make sure, because you have a room, but you see how this pillar's here, and it almost blocked me and I almost got grabbed by it. And then once you get close, oh my God, this is like really bad RNG. But yeah, usually what'll happen is it'll just do like this swipe and you could just run in and all you're doing is full transformation attacks. So R1, L1, 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 dead. That was super sketchy, but it was a good demonstration of what could happen. So once that witch is dead, you're gonna come down here. This is gonna be your, your tool, your workshop tool for the runes. So now you can put the runes on and you'll be ready to head to Ligarius. So we're gonna go back to Hunter's Dream. And just make sure because this is it's kind of it's kind of a joke, but it's kind of serious that we always forget to put the runes on for Ligarius, and I don't know why. It's just something that happens. Um But before we go there, we have to activate the Ligarius um area to be able to go there. So what you're gonna do is equip uh, cocktail, pungent cocktail, elixir, and antidote. Those are the three things that you're gonna need for this next area. So, oh yeah, I'm sorry. What I did was I went to Forbidden Woods. This is the same lamp that you go to to fight shadows. So what we're gonna do once we spawn here is we're gonna run up, we're gonna kill this guy. Now you can do this a little bit earlier if you want. I just choose to do it before Ligarius. But you definitely can do this a little bit earlier. Just remember your damage and your weapon level. So same thing. Um, throw a cocktail against that wall there for this dude. Um, same drop down before shadows, but you're not getting a crawler. So you're just turning around and going over, over here. And you're literally heading back to the exact same area. So it should... It should look very familiar. You should be very used to this run through by now. And you're going to come up here. And like at this point, you could kill those dogs. You don't have to, but you can. Uh, they give like 2000 souls some, or echoes, but you can always run right past them and then just go straight through here because my levels at this point are exactly what I need them to be. And anyways, so kill them or not, run down here. And you're just gonna run straight through. And you're gonna come to this opening where this poison swamp, and this is why you have the antidote on. Remember, environmental damage does not count as a hit because it's environmental, it's not from an enemy. And then you're just gonna go through this opening here. Make sure you heal yourself with antidote to get the poison away before you climb these ladders. These ladders are like the longest ladders ever. And there's two of them. So I'm still climbing. That was the first ladder. That was literally just the first one. And then this is the second one. I don't think this one is as long as the first one though. So once you climb those two ladders, you're going to head left through this opening here and you're gonna get your blue elixir out. You only need one for this part. Um, the reason I use a blue elixir is because there is a brain sucker that's right over here, right there. And if you if you use an elixir, it won't really bother you. You can pick up that madman's knowledge, but you don't actually need it. It's just extra. You can just get one extra thing. Like um, you can get a bolt paper or beast blood pellet. So you can pick it up. You can choose to or not. Um, either way, you're gonna run through here, go left. And what we're doing is we're getting our last umbilical cord so that we can activate the moon presence fight. Remember to pop those before you fight Garamond and just make sure you pop those because if you don't, if you only pop two, if you only pop one, if you pop zero, you cannot fight moon presence. So just remember that. So this is where the third one is. Just head in there, kill her, 
she drops it use it i always use them like as soon as i can so i don't forget and then we're gonna head back down the stairs and now we're gonna get what's called the canehurst summons which will allow us to go to the legaria split so you just go out make a left this is where you came in uh on the right over here and you're just gonna pass there you're gonna open these doors and this is where you first started pretty much this is like the first area that you were in so kill the kill the alien dies in one hit here's your cane her summons here open the door and you are done that run through is it's such a long run through but it is what it is right and yeah this is like the first area that you were in when you first start the game so you're gonna grab this lamp and you're done with that and we're back at hunter's dream so now we're gonna get or we're gonna use our madman's knowledge that we have i probably use everything at this point because we're pretty much done and we're gonna just get more blue elixirs you need five total for this next split i think it's four but i get five just in case and then you know you can hold up to 10 beast blood pellets and 10 bolt paper so do with it what you want and head back to the witches split or the witches area and the only thing you need on is blue elixir so same thing this is the exact same run through as before so you're just gonna run all the way through same thing go through stamina management up the stairs go behind this lady and there's one thing that i forgot which is what i just told you guys and it was to put the runes on um i don't know if i did this on purpose just to get through this area or not but either way you're gonna head to this thing right here and it's gonna activate a cutscene. Don't worry about the enemies. You're not going to get touched by them. Skip the cutscene, go to the carriage, and you're done. And that's it. So there's a cutscene that plays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is like the coolest area, I think. So now we are going to... I, I might have forgot to put the runes on. Like I said, for some reason... For some reason, you always forget them. And I don't know why. Oh, man. I'm going back okay so yeah i did that on purpose so these are the runes that we're going to use anti-clockwork this anti-clockwise this gets you more stamina the clock mark claw mark good god can i talk uh you get more damage on your visceral attack and then the beast runes uh it boosts the effects of your temp uh transformation attacks so pretty much like your dodging like l1s or your transformation like uh r1 l1s you get more damage from that and again we're gonna buy more elixirs remember we get our insights to zero and then the third the third uh gravestone is where we need to go which is canehurst so when we get here what i do now because i've had it in the past where these tick things i don't know if you can see them in this or not but there's these big tick things you'll see them in the dlc here's one um if you don't use any elixir and you go to this door, there's a chance that one of them can like just pounce on you. It's really awful because this door takes some time and that's why I always turn around because I've been dunked on. But either way, I'm gonna head through here. You're gonna go up these stairs and you're gonna go left. And then your elixir is gonna wear off. So you're gonna pop another one before this opening here and run through here. There's invisible ladies that are here that you oh there you go you can see so it kind of just uh delays their reaction because they're really quick and head up these stairs manage your stamina get it back here run through this opening right there thick gargoyle boy and then there's this guy right here i feel so bad for him but you shoot him you knock him down he's really quick so just be careful with him just shoot him and run past him and then you're going to go through this opening. You're going to pop an elixir here. Now, this this part's... Uh, you have to just pay attention here. So, I'm going to run through the middle. Remember, they're delayed. Now, this dude right here, this guy, even if you have an elixir, sometimes he'll shoot darts at you. And we're, we're, our goal is to go kill him, but he can still shoot at you. You can strafe them, but you need to just pay attention to what he's doing. So, when you run in here, these ladies, they won't do anything. They're very delayed. But this guy, he doesn't really seem to care sometimes. They're so just going to go up. You're going to charge up an R2 and it kills him in one hit. 
And then you're going to go up these stairs. Up these across this little bridge. And then you're going to go on these stairs and you're going to do this uh, jump over the railing. So you just jump and you land on this, this little bookshelf thing. And you're going to open up this thing that's going to move here. And it has a ladder attached to it. So that's what we're going to go up. Okay. So once we're done and we're up the ladder, go up here, make a right, and up these stairs. And then we're going to go up some spiral stairs here. And we're almost at Ligarius. So then we're going to just drop down to the side. I try and drop down pretty early because there's gargoyles up there. And I don't know what the heck they do. But yeah. How are you supposed to find this fight, by the way? This is like the craziest thing. But either way, you just follow that path. You're going to get the cold blood there. If you want, um, I think I pick it up just for extra levels for the DLC. And then you're just going to climb this ladder and you're pretty much at Legarius. Now, at this point, when I do all bosses, this is where I get nervous. Grab those Bold Hunters marks as well. This is where I start to get nervous because uh, Legarius is really crazy. Um, for the most part, the strat is, is pretty good. The only thing that he could do, which is, it's pretty rare, but he can insta-phase two. And if he insta-phase two, there's like no way to get out of it. So, um, it, it's not something that could happen every single time. Like, I've only seen it happen twice out of all the runs that I've done. But just, just know that it's something that he could do. So just prepare yourself. But anyways, when we go into the fight, there's a cutscene that plays. I like to go over to the left here. And buff up behind this uh, rooftop thing and our goal is we're gonna do uh, dodge in L1 so we're gonna be locked on to him we're gonna dodge in L1 and back up so that was one dodge in L1 that was two just back up dodge in L1 that was three this is a very good RNG dodge in L1 that was four now we're gonna get away from him so we're gonna get away from him so that we can rebuff um just be cautious because he does these things and for some reason like they'll blow up just like that it has a huge aoe and sometimes they'll just go into the ground it's really weird so anyways i'm just here i'm waiting for my buff to run out so now we rebuff and now we're gonna go do the rest of the fight and this is pretty much the whole fight but i think this one went on for a while because he didn't give me good rng let's see the skulls is what we want to go for and we don't want him to be against the wall so this is this is good positioning we want him to do the skulls but we don't want to be on an him to be on an incline because they act really weird sometimes so that was good positioning but he did this so i need to get away as you can see it just went into the ground it didn't have any type of explosion so I'm just waiting, I'm waiting, and there's like a certain point where it's like, okay, I need to rebuff. So if he doesn't do it soon, we need to go away just like this. And <laughs> I sat down because he's just being annoying. And then we get our buffs back. So we rebuff, and now we're going to try it again. Um, the one thing about the skulls is you need to learn the positioning for them. It's really weird hitbox for them. And they can hit you even if you think you dodge correctly. So there, there's like a certain spacing that you do with them. So just practice this fight a lot. So he's not giving me what I want. Really annoying. So now let's see. We want him to do the skulls. He's still not doing it. And I'm shaking my head. SMH. Okay, what is he doing now? He's being crazy. Yeah, this fight, it can be pretty tedious sometimes if he doesn't give you what you want. There we go. There's the skulls. So now we're going to dodge in L1. Full L1 transformation attacks. Get behind him. Backstab. And get the visceral. And he's dead. And that's the whole fight. Um, so that's what I waited for. For him to do that. So we lock on. We dodge in. L1. 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 Get behind him, charge up the backstab, and 
and uh get the visceral now the thing is is that when he's charging this attack up you need to you need to be fast you can't just be hitting him because if he lifts his staff up and does his aoe it's damn near impossible to get rid of it or like get out of that without a hit um you just have to be very very careful and my positioning isn't the best but i i've played this enough to know how to just maneuver my controller over so that i get the backstab but i would suggest to be directly behind him and hold up so that you get the backstab but as you can see i i angled it a little bit to the left so that i would kill him uh you can also fall off the roof so that was a pretty scary spot um and that's the garris there's a crown that you get it sells for like thirty-five thousand. it's really good and we are headed to the last two bosses and my character just did a meme gesture so there was that fight um i'm gonna end the video here next video we'll talk about garman and moon and that will be the entire base game all bosses so that's pretty dope but this video was really good um i think we went over a lot uh again as always comment below if you have any questions or if there's something that you want me to go over in more detail and i will see you guys in the next one for garman and moon presence the most meme bosses in the world till then take care guys Bye-bye.